This video is going to show you how to use the jump ringer to create jump rings. Tools that you need for this, or you'll find helpful for this, is A, a jump ringer, at least one C-clamp, you may end up wanting two, so got two, two C-clamps, a piece of wax, like an old candle or a piece of hard soap, a bench pen, a jeweler's saw blade, which the jeweler's saw blade has teeth that come down and are really pointy. Those need to point down and out, which we'll talk about. A jeweler's saw frame, which may also be called a coping saw. And I also find it useful to have a pair of nylon jawed pliers, maybe a leather finger guard, and a roll of masking tape. Those aren't critical, but I find that they're very helpful. So those are the tools that you most likely Once you have the tools that you need for making a jump ring, you of course also need some wire. I'm going to use 18 gauge wire, and the larger, the bigger the jump ring, probably the thicker the wire you want to use. If you're using and making a very small um, series of jump rings, a thinner wire works well. But unless you're soldering the jump rings, um, thin wire and large jump rings equals very fragile and probably not very effective jump rings. Now these jump rings might end up being links on a chain or they may just be added, they may be used as a bail for a pendant to a necklace or connecting other findings to chains and so on. So very useful to know how to make a, a jump ring. I guess one of the items I did not mention, you will need a pair of wire cutters as well. So I'm going to cut a piece of wire. So good length, probably about 10 inches or so. And then I'm going to set up my jump ringer. So to set up my jump ringer, I'm going to set that so that the handle, I'm right handed, so I'm going to set that so that I'm able to easily access that handle. Okay, but before I C-clamp it in, I'm going to show you how to change the, uh, the mandrel part. So there are lots of different mandrel sizes in this. And this is really basically just the, the chuck part of a drill um, with a crank handle. Um, you do not need to have one of these in order to make jump rings, but I happen to have it, so I quite like it. But there are large mandrels and small mandrels, and I'm going to use one of the smaller ones. You may want to label those. Um, let me see, it's time to relabel binder. My labels are getting kind of crusty and falling off. But I'm going to put the label in into the, the chuck, which is the part that holds it, and I tighten that by hand first, and then I use the chuck key that goes in the hole, and I tighten that, which this would be easier if I already had it anchored, but then you couldn't see it as well. So I tighten that chuck with the chuck key, and I'm going to turn that around, and I'm going to C-clamp that to my table, okay, because you need to have it secured. So I'm going to C-clamp that down. Now you may have um, a setup where this is just always attached to something. There are, there are holes in the base. I could screw that into a surface. I wouldn't have to continually change it. I don't happen to have a surface that that would work with, so I just C-clamp it down instead. So I'm going to take my wire. I find it easiest if you kind of bend the wire just a little bit, make kind of an L shape, and then I put it into, if there's space, I put it into the chuck, um, the gap in the chuck. Sometimes that works really well, sometimes it doesn't. This is a great example of when it doesn't. So I'm going to make a little bit longer one. So I'm going to make it kind of ugly there, but all right. So now I'm going to very slowly spool this on, holding onto the wire, making sure that my spring that I'm making is um, tight so that the one row just is right up against the other row. As I So at this point, I've made this spring, but there's still a little tag, um, tail hanging out there. If I continue to roll that and twist that into the spring and my thumb gets caught on that end, it's going to slice down the, the back of my thumb. So I want to be careful. At that point, I may want to switch 
either to a pair of regular pliers, nylon jawed pliers, that's my favorite, and then they just slides right around there. Now you can um, still do things with this wire. I'm going to go ahead and cut it off just for the demo's sake. I'm going to cut that off. Okay, so I've got a, about a, not quite a one inch long spring, so I'm going to use that to then make my jump rings. Alright, so now I have taken my jump ringer away. I don't need that any longer, but I am going to use a bench pin and I'm going to C-clamp that down. I'm going to loosen up my C-clamp first. And just a little bit more. Okay, so I don't want, I find it easiest to do this portion of the process on a bench pen. You probably don't need to, but I think it's much easier. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take that spring and I'm going to masking tape around it. I find this protects me a little bit from the heat generated by the friction. It also makes it so I'm less likely to drop all my jump rings. So I'm going to peel that or tear that. So I just have a tube basically of the spring and I'm going to have that wrapped in the masking tape. Then I'm going to take my jeweler's saw. I'm going to take my saw blade and I'm going to make sure that my teeth are down and out with my saw blade. So I'm going to tighten the top clamp and then I need to tighten the bottom clamp and tighten that saw blade in there too, but I need to string my spring on there first. Then I'm going to lean in and tighten that, that bottom clamp so that that blade is taut. I want to lubricate the saw blade with a little bit of wax from a candle. So I just save old candles for that. And I'm going to saw on this edge. So you can see that this already has a lot of cuts into it. And that's from doing these jump rings this way. So I'm going to kind of let it rest down in there. And we're going to get that started. Sometimes the first draw is kind of tricky. And I need to keep that blade down inside that same spot. If I move it, then I'm going to get extra marks on the inside of my jump rings and I don't want that. I also want to make sure that I don't have a finger right underneath where that saw blade is because I don't want to come through there and cut my finger, which surprisingly I've not done and I'm pretty clumsy. But this is getting pretty hot because of the, the friction and I can tell part of it did not get masking tape because that's the part that really is hot. Do you hear the difference in that sound? That means that I got all the way through it. And now if I peel back, ooh, if I peel back my masking tape, so now if I peel back that masking tape, I have a whole collection of jump rings. Now keep in mind, as you're using those jump rings, you may need to file a little bit, but the jump rings are already slightly opened to the side. I don't know if you can see that very well, but when you open a jump ring, you open it this way. Don't spring it apart. You want to move it to the side, insert whatever you need to, and then close it back, kind of walk it back together, and that'll keep it from getting misshapen because you want it to maintain its round. So that's pretty much all you do with the jump rings.